Okay, Dustin Bird, nice to catch up. How's it going? It's great to catch up with you, yeah, Fergie. It's going well, man. It's going well. Yeah, it's a little bit, um, I mean, I'm just sitting here in this room. I've logged more hours in this room in the past, like, nine months than any room in history. So that's exciting. That's maybe record-breaking for me, anyway. It ain't the most exciting thing we're going to talk about on this Zoom call. You know, during a pandemic, I know what I've been up to and I know what many others have been up to. And the answer is not much, right? There's not much we can do. Not many people in the pandemic can say they scored themselves a new record deal. Congratulations. Hey, Tell us what's hey. up. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so Open Road, which is uh, just such a fantastic team. Um, like we were chatting a bit about it before we were recording here. But that I mean, that. The group of people at Open Road, um, they're just so, like, hardworking and, like, ready to go and ready to get at it with this new music that I'm making and um, just really kind of letting me tell my story. And, um, you know, over this pandemic, like, creating has been a big part. I mean, it's always a big part of um, my process to be producing and writing and but you know you remove the shows from that thing and then i'm just producing and writing um so that's all i've really been doing since march and um we did a uh, a series called the live off the floor series um back in the fall which was just a bunch of tunes that i had written uh and not released as um as like singles or anything and we did them live and uh that was just a really kind of I guess self-indulgent way to do the songs because we hadn't been on stage for so long that you know I could finally get into the studio um with a with a bunch of players and play the thing live off the floor and um we put that out kind of as a statement to say like you know here's what I'm writing here's what I'm creating it just is what it is it's there's no like kind of uh preconceived box that this thing needs to fit in this is just kind of the music that I'm creating and so Open Road came on, kind of jumped on that train with us to be like, we're down for you to like create what you want to create. And, you know, it's been really important to me that I musically and lyrically just remain honest, remain truthful, like be the genuine me, you know what I mean? So I don't have to, uh, I'm not trying to like say anything to get ads or to get plays or anything like that. Like I'm, I really just want to tell my story and connect with people on like just an honest level. Um, and so open road came along and they were like, yeah, this is, this is sick. We want to be a part of this. And we were like, okay, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let's, let's do it. So yeah, it was, uh, it was really, really exciting for uh, my little team and I, and um yeah, I mean, so we're putting out this record on February 5th, and man, am I, like, this is only a, uh, a few days away at the date of this recording, and, and when this goes out, this will be the release day, and I think, um, uh, man, it's just, it's just been such a kind of fast-moving train, um, and all have happened during COVID, like, that's pretty crazy. Is it ever? So, to put this into context for some of our audience, we're talking about your new record deal with Open Road Recordings. This is the record label that can brag about Tim Hicks, the Hunter Brothers, uh, Madeline Merlot, Sons of Daughters, and now they've got Sterling Ontario's Dustin Bird. So the record labels also produce such incredible talent like Dean Brody over the years. So how does it feel all these years of working away at your craft you know, and to land in this situation. Um, when the conversation with Open Road ended and you made your deal, what was running through your mind? Yeah, uh, you know, those artists that you're talking about, I mean, those are artists that you've played on the station for years that I've been heavily influenced by. Um, and, you know, even back to you know, starting a couple of years ago, writing with some of them and just getting to know them, uh, you know, as people, um, just here and there, you know, events or, or whatever. That was cool. Just 
in itself. It's like these are these are people that I've looked up to in this industry for a long time. And um, obviously, you know, the Canadian country music industry is a really small industry and, and everybody is really, really tight knit. But, you know, I've uh, grown up on this stuff. And so for me, like, um, you know, like a Jason McCoy or Tim Hicks or, you know, Dean Brody, who they, who they had there for a while. And so like those artists are like icons to me. And um, so to be like on that team, to be like involved uh, sort of on that same, to be on that same playing field um, is crazy. Like, I don't think it's something that, that I've entirely, um, I guess, internalized yet because we've been so, I've been so caught up in creating and making stuff and um, busy every day. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of got to let that sink in to be like, yeah, like now this is, this is a pretty big level up for me. And um, I'm just really fortunate and like kind of honored to be a part of that group. It's, it's crazy. You know, it's, uh, I think you made a great point there. You haven't really had time to let it sink in because it sounds like you've been going, going, going throughout the entire pandemic. You got the deal and uh, now we got an album on our hands. Tell us about Unscripted. Yeah, it has been fast. It's been fast moving. Um, and Unscripted, we've got a few new songs on here. So some of these songs, um, you know, a lot of people may have heard or may not have heard uh, that we kind of dropped over the past year, uh, you know, starting, I guess, at the end of 2019. And um, we we wanted to kind of package them all together because uh, they are all sort of like an album. We release them individually, but they, they really do bounce off of one another. For me as a writer, it was really important as we released those songs that they made sense back to back. So we wanted to put that into an album and then um we included the live off the floor stuff uh which is like again just really self-indulgent for me i love the live off the floor stuff um and now we've got a couple new tunes on here as well so one of the songs is called it ain't me um which is like a super super banging i mean i'm very biased um but like it's super super bang uh kind of kind of got like it's got some of these like disco funk kind of influences and stuff and um like as a player that's just really fun to play it's really uh it's just really rewarding you know what i mean to do like a really cool slap bass part and stuff and so i definitely wanted to make sure that there was something banging like that on the record and then uh we have the single broken lonely um which is coming to your station on March 1st and um, is going to be kind of the leading single off of this record. Broken Lonely is, uh, I mean, I think the title does a pretty good job of explaining it, but it's its really uh, a statement piece for me. This is, you know, again, like I, I'm, it's really important to me that I just tell the truth, that I'm really, really honest. And uh, because I find that's just the only way for me to, uh, really be like fulfilled as an artist and to really connect with people. So yeah, it's a song about being broken and, and lonely. <laughs> um, I've heard the song, the song's terrific. We're actually gonna be able to get it to, uh, for airplay on the 1st of March. I'm hoping that you can kind of slide it to me on the 28th of February, <laughs> you know, I can feel I got some sort of bonus, but there's a, a lyric video that uh, people can, I think, check out now. I've seen it too. And in the lyric video, two things uh, stood out to me. A really cool looking car that yeah. you got you in. And then there was an instrument you're playing in what appears to be the back seat of the car. And I yeah. thought, what on earth do you have in your hand? <laughs> so, so yeah, so we got this 63 Impala, which, uh, is is like uh, maybe my second cousin i don't really know how the whole tiering system works for cousins that's maybe something i should figure out anyways it's like a second cousin uh uh 63 impala and so we just shot it like pretty close to here just on a bunch of uh on a bunch of really nice roads that like we wouldn't you know destroy the thing on and uh my my other cousin joe he builds these uh like cigar box guitars oh. Uh, he started building these. He started building these a bunch of years ago, maybe six, seven years ago now. And I remember he gave me like one of the first ones 
that he uh, that he built. And it was literally just like a cigar box. He stuck a pickup in there and it had like three strings and you just use a slide, right? Um, if anybody doesn't know what a slide is, it's just like, well, it just lets you slide in the strings. And uh, so I, I kind of found weird ways to like incorporate that because it in, into recordings every every now and then because it just had such a dirty grimy but like really really twangy kind of sound to it which I really like so I kind of found ways to do it and then we were, we were shooting this video and just before we left that morning to uh go take that car out and, and shoot um the guy with the car he's like hey like also your, your cousin made this guitar for me I don't know if, I don't know if you want to use it but it had like a license plate from 1963 on it and like it had some like old like impala it was made with like these impala parts or whatever and i was like man like that's friggin prime like so we didn't we didn't plan that out at all but um i was just like you know it'd be super super chill because those cars have like these really giant back seats um just uh, like friggin minivan sized back seats and so I was like, let's let me just lay back in this backseat and and play this thing. And uh, I was having way too much fun doing it. Like I was like tuning it up, like getting getting yeah. into it. Yeah. So uh, that lyric video was a ton of fun to shoot. Also crazy to drive one of those uh, old sixty three pals. I've never driven one of those cars before. Terrifying. No power steering. These uh, little like gardener snakes. Up there for- <laughs> Not for that, let me tell you. <laughs> no, the no power steering is not for the faint of heart. I had no idea there was such a cool story behind a, what what turned out to be a cigar box guitar. My gosh! So people can go find that lyric video now. Dustin Bird, congratulations! My gosh, you know when I when I heard about the record deal with Open Road and thinking about what I know of your story to get from where it yeah. began here is uh, is terrific and it's nice to know that that lyric video was shot on some back roads in our neck of the woods that's that's really cool so we got the album on our hands now yeah um eight songs i think i saw on the track listing eight songs yeah eight songs um so hopefully we'll be able to uh play all eight of those when we can get shows back uh, build a show around that album i i'm like I think we're all just like dying in anticipation of that day, but um, yeah, you know, the album's here and we're ready to play it live whenever we can. So the album's out, unscripted. Broken Lonely's coming to radio on the 1st of March. I'm going to be the first guy with that thing on the air. I yeah, told yeah, that yeah. record label, I said, count me in, I can't wait. <laughs> I but love- what else is coming up in the month of March? So yeah, the month of March, um, so as of right now, uh, we're working on a live off the floor piece. So we're going to be doing um, live performances of uh, Broken Lonely, as well as a couple other uh, sort of surprise tunes, which is going to be kind of fun. And um, yeah, and then we've got a ton of, uh, we're going to be doing some live stuff in March. So like Instagram live uh, takeover type stuff. We're also going to be doing that a little bit in February. I don't remember the exact dates, but we're going to be doing some takeovers and stuff, uh, which people can interact with and, and kind of get involved in. Um, yeah. And so once, once that song, uh, gets rolling, um, you know, people can, people can share it and they can get involved, uh, on TikTok once we kind of get doing that. So we'll be doing some, uh, like TikTok duet stuff and whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's uh, there's going to be a lot going on. Um, half of it is just like escaping my brain at this point um, because it's it's all in like eleven point font in the marketing plan. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> we'll we'll get there. We got quite a bit going on. Good stuff. Congratulations again. When uh, I, I just can't wait to get my hands on the song, get it on the radio, and keep this train moving. Dustin Bird, congratulations on all of it. And before I let you go. Um, you mentioned Jason McCoy and the Road Hammers, of course, part of the same. They're label mates now. <laughs> it's not a nice thing here. But yeah. uh, you worked with uh, McCoy and a whole bunch of other artists um, on a song called Together We're Stronger back. And it feels like a lifetime ago, which goes to demonstrate just how long this pandemic's gone on. But uh, you co-wrote that, if I'm not mistaken. So kind of take us through that whole project from where the concept came from to getting everybody recruited and to making it come to life. 
I'm excited to talk about this. I'm excited to answer this question because that I mean, it does feel like a long time ago. Um, honestly, it's what coming up on a year now, uh, yeah. a couple of months, which is crazy. Um, Brian Harwood and I, we, I, I I've uh, been producing Brian's stuff, and so um, we were we were working on some tunes at, at the time, and. Um, you know, we, we both kind of had live stuff set up and we were kind of setting up his live show. I was setting it up on the production side and, and he said, you know, man, like this pandemic thing, like it was maybe one or two weeks in and we're like, how long is this going to last? Like what's going to happen? And, um, you know, Unison Fund started getting involved uh, in supporting the music industry. Unison Fund is a benevolent fund um, that provides assistance, uh, you know, mental health assistance, financial assistance to artists, uh, songwriters, really whoever needs it in the music industry. And so they were starting to get involved and we said, you know, how do we, like, I think we're, we, I think we kind of got to hunker down for this. So however long this is going to last. And at the time we thought it'd just be a few months, but we we're like, let's figure something out now so that we can uh, try and help all these other artists who are also losing shows, who are also, um, you know, going, going through, uh, gonna be going through a rough patch and so we wrote together with strong um as a song to basically just raise money for unison that we could put out that people could uh, jam to uh stream and that would yeah give us some money for unison so uh brian started reaching out to um a bunch of artists like jason mccoy jason blaine ali uh you know aaron Pachet. And um, just, uh, I think we had 17 at the end of it, like 17 different artists on it. So for me on the production side, that was like, you're telling me I have to have 17 different voices, harm and leads uh, come from like just people's houses, right? So like I'm tracking all these people like on the phone and, and it was hectic. And then we also had to put a music video together, which was Brian's job, which is a whole other thing. And so the thing got really hectic really quickly. But it was like hectic in such a good way. I mean, I was working like 18 hours a day for a while there, like just trying to like get this thing all ready to go. And um, we got uh, Corey, Corey Marks, um, who was featured on the track. He had been uh, involved with the Snowbirds. Uh, he's, he's somewhat of a pilot, as I understand. And, um, yeah. and so he would reached out to uh, Jennifer Casey um, with the Snowbirds and she was it was just like yes absolutely we want to be involved in this um so they submitted some video footage and um and so the the military was actually supporting it out east they're playing it on their uh like coast guard ships naval ships i i don't really understand the military very much but they were supporting it and um it was just like this really really awesome thing and then like a week later uh i got a call it was like jennifer casey was in an accident and i was like what like so the snowbirds were flying and and uh she crashed the, the airplane and so she ended up passing of course and and that was like that was a pretty massive blow to the whole project i mean that really was like okay like it was about covid and it was about this stuff and now now this is going to definitely have to take a turn because that was just a huge emotional toll on everybody and um, really completely changed the dynamic of the whole song. And I mean, you know, lucky that luckily that song was like, you know, we're not saying COVID or anything in it because it really did basically take on a whole new meaning with that. And um, so it, we, we ended up dedicating the video uh, to her and to her family and, um, yeah, it was it was a tough time, but uh, I think I mean I hope that it'd be something that she'd be proud of. I know that she was really pumped about the project, and um, yeah, I mean throughout throughout the whole thing, it was definitely just like an emotional roller coaster, and um, we ended up getting getting some support from people, and a lot of people really ended up liking the tune and and watching the video, and it really touched a lot of Canadians, and so that was something that we were really really proud of, and. Um, I was really, really proud to be a part of that. And I mean, I had like a few lines that I sang in that song and everybody had a few lines and, and we really just kind of came together as an industry of performers and of people promoting the song. And, um, 
and then you know with the with the snowbirds and uh the navy and stuff like the whole country came together on that tune um which was amazing and of course mccoy had his had his own version of that we are one um which he actually dropped a few weeks before ours so kind of like we're like the copycats but he um he ended up uh doing something with that as well and so and then you know you start to see like other things like that pop up and i think it was just such a testament to like how resilient this industry is how willing we are as um artists and, and as industry members to kind of push through and to and to keep going and like the because honestly i mean that's what the music industry is almost all the time so you add a little covid to it like it ain't gonna break us we're just gonna find a way around it to like come together and to uh make the most of it so that's what together we're strong was for us it was a ton of work but it was absolutely worth it you know at the end of the day and um yeah now you know it takes it takes a long time for like royalties to roll through and all that sort of stuff but uh, we're really looking forward to being able to um to give unison a, a great donation and um yeah i'm i'm really proud of that project yeah you should be you know and it's funny a couple of thoughts hearing you tell the story is you know it, it inspires me in a sense i think to kind of breathe new life into it, go back and see the video again and push it back out there. Because if it was important at the onset of the pandemic, it's important now because it's not over. And as you said, the song doesn't talk about COVID or anything else. And 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 it's so inspirational to hear you talk about Jen Casey's role in that. And I'm sure she'd be as proud of that as you are as, as in your role in it too. Um, it, it was so cool and and uh, to see the whole industry come together on that. So I think you should be really proud of your role in that. That's that's terrific stuff. Um, listen, I, I think the sky's the limit here and I'm so happy to see you take the next step in your career. Congrats on the deal with Open Road. Uh, we got unscripted the album out now and a lot of great promotional stuff's gonna be rolling out for your fans over the course of the next few weeks and months yeah. in support of the album. So. Where do people find you on socials, Dustin? Just Dustin Bird. Um, the real Dustin Bird on TikTok. I haven't been like super active on TikTok. Um, and I'm really working on that. I'm really, really trying here to like figure out how to do it. That's the most like uh, millennial thing that I could possibly say. But it's true. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Um, but yeah, I'll be doing, I'll be doing some TikToks. You can find me on TikTok. You can find me on, uh, on YouTube, uh, just Dustin Bird. That's where you'll find the lyric video, uh, as well as all the live off the floor stuff. Um, and some of this new live off the floor stuff that we're going to be, uh, dropping here in the next couple months and Instagram, Twitter, um, open road, put together a looking website. So you can go to uh, DustinBirdMusic.com if you want to like get all the deets, but if you just want to check there, yeah, just all the socials. Okay, perfect. DustinBirdMusic.com and it's going to shoot people off to all the socials, I'll bet with links right on that website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. My gosh, man. Uh, again, I go back to when we started this conversation, how most people are just trying to get through a pandemic and the whole thing. And meanwhile, you're producing stuff, getting record deals, the whole thing cooped <laughs> up in the studio, I see. Yeah, you know, like, um, at, at times it like drives you crazy. You see, I got this, I got this Fitbit, which I'm really excited about. Um, I've had this on for the past, uh, past few weeks All right. uh, to, to yell at me um when i don't get enough exercise because it's so easy to just like just be making music all the time and stuff so yeah you kind of go a little bit crazy but just just with that um this has been actually a really really productive time for me um to just be writing to be creating to be making stuff and making the best music that i've ever made so i mean as much as i absolutely do miss people and miss shows and miss like just all of it. Um, when that stuff comes back around, we're gonna have some of the best music um, that we've ever made to, to play live. So um, yeah, you take the good with the bad. I just gotta remember to do more push-ups. Oh, yeah. you and me both. I think what we should do is a whole separate podcast on this whole Fitbit phenomenon. 
Oh, you're on the fifth, fifth thing too. Eh? Oh God, I've been on it for years. In fact, I've got mine set, and I don't know whether you at, at about ten to the hour. If I haven't got my ass and got enough steps, it buzzes and basically <laughs> helps me to get up. So yeah. You know, you'll become a slave to the Fitbit. But you know what? It's all in the name of good health, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what I tell myself. That's that's what I tell myself when I get really, really annoyed at all the buzzing. For sure. I'm like, yeah, no, this is good for me. This is, I need this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I'm crazy with it. First thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I open up the app so it knows I'm awake. So my sleep data is all accurate as it can. I, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe, you know, here we are in early February when the song drops on radio, I'll get you back on here and we'll talk about the song, but we'll do more on the Fitbit. How about that? I'll check let's, in. On let's not dig into the stats, of the Fitbit. Let's keep it surface level. Um, let's, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to get into the stats, man. You got to get into the stats. All right. Listen. Yeah, gonna... Okay. Th thanks for your time, Dustin. Congrats. Uh, and I'm telling you, when when uh, Broken Lonely hits radio, I'm going to be the first guy in line to put that thing on the radio. And I hope you'll join me when I can. And I absolutely will join you, of course. And I, I really appreciate that. This is such an exciting time. So thank you for, for having me on here. Well, I've had a riot and I feel like I've taken way too much of your time and that you're probably about to go work your magic on some music making <laughs> stuff. So I'll leave you to it. Again, DustinBirdMusic.com. Congrats, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you.